Fancy, and you are listening to the Phantasm Podcast. Phantasm. Maximum Terror. Ah! That's your target audience, baby! Phantasm. And you know something? I sort of enjoyed it. Phantasm. Sell the metal! Sell the metal! Sell the metal! Sell the metal! Ah! Ah! Hey, this is Dr. Vincent West, medical doctor with the Phantasm Podcast, and I've got one of my favorite people on the planet today. He's an amazing drummer, uh, one of the founders of Autopsy. Uh, they have a new album coming out called Morbidity Triumphant, and it's going to be on Peaceful Records, and it comes out September 30th, and I'm so excited to talk about this record with you. It's so fucking good. Uh, so, Chris, thank you so much for doing this. It's amazing. Thank you. Yo, no problem, man. Uh, nice to be here. Thanks for the, the invite. Hey, thank you for doing this. We appreciate your time. Um, real quick, uh, for myself and our listeners out there, uh, you played on one of the best albums ever made in death metal. Uh, you you played on Scream Bloody Gore. Can you talk about briefly about joining up with Chuck and making that record, maybe doing some shows, just anything you want to talk about about it would be awesome. Uh, I would just say, you know, my, my mind is just a, a pretzel of uh, information and uh, memories and stuff like that. I would say, ask me a specific question, I'll give you uh, uh, the best answer I can give. It'll probably be pretty decent. Okay, sweet. How about, uh, how did you become a member of death? Okay, uh, that's an easy one. Um, I was approached by a friend of mine uh one day when i was uh seven freshly 17 at that um and um she worked for the the local uh high school uh, radio station and had her own show and stuff and she came up to me and was like hey i got this 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 guy named chuck is about to advertise on our station the local school station of all things that uh he's looking for band members for a band called death is that something that you're interested in and uh you can maybe imagine i, I couldn't believe it i thought there was no way that was real because i was i had already been a fan of the band for a couple of years you know like getting the starting with the death by metal demo sure and i got the got the other ones you know infernal death and reign of terror and all that fun stuff and so uh and then i knew chuck was based out of florida and death so you know in my mind i'm like this is not real because i'm over here and they're over there <laughs> and how could this how could this be the same person but of course i grabbed the phone number i don't think the ad ever aired on the radio i think i i uh intercepted <laughs> and, beat uh, it to the punch you know fucked over anyone else that may have wanted to try but which back then probably would have been nobody as weird as that may sound now but yeah it is weird. Uh, <clears throat> that's how it was back then so i called the number lo and behold chuck answered the phone and you know i, I immediately realized that it was the same guy and um we talked on the phone not even so much about like me joining the band he was like oh what are you into like oh you know i figured i'd be impressive and be like oh i like artillery and creator and sodom and bathory and whatever else and i remember he said oh what about slayer and possessed i'm like well duh, of course and uh, that seemed to satisfy his curiosity enough to have me come over and quote unquote try out which wasn't even a tryout i just went over to his house where he was staying and he he played me uh i remember he played me scream bloody gore on guitar he's like oh, this is a new song i wrote check it out I'm like oh it's great and I played him a demo of some band that I'd been in before just to show that I know how to play fast, you know? So I had to, like, prove myself to sure. some capacity because there was no drum kit over there or anything. And so I kind of got the gig that day without actually, like, playing. But then we, we got together and played, and it was, you know, like, oh, yeah, this is this is cool. So that's how I got the gig. That's amazing. And then real quick, as far as, like, uh, recording and, and you did that. Did you guys do a lot of shows together? 
we never did a show together. Okay. We couldn't find a ba- no, we couldn't find a bass player, no matter how hard we tried. It wasn't like today where there'd be a line of people going, please let me be your bass player. <laughs> right. like, the, the, the request fell on, on deaf ears, you know, so whether it was in Florida where I was with him for a while or over here, wherever he was for a while with me, there was, we just couldn't find one. It was impossible. That's, that's so, that's so crazy. Um, looking well, back, I knew what death metal was. It was a weird thing that only losers did. You know. <laughs> Let me ask you something to lead right into this amazing uh, morbidity uh, triumphant record. Um, I want to ask you something. I'm very curious what your thoughts are on this. Okay. I always, I always felt because you mentioned artillery and creator and Sodom. I've always felt. I know I'm not quite your age, but I'm I'm, I'm on your heels. So I I felt we, we yeah we we, yeah. we grew up with this stuff, and I I was just curious. I always felt like the Teutonic thrash stuff was heavily. I don't really hear anybody talk about. It. You just mentioned it. I feel like it's 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 vital to a lot of death metal stuff. Well, it's all part of the chain, you know. It's all they're all links in the chain. You know? I mean, nothing nothing against like American thrash, but I'm just saying, you know, like the Teutonic stuff just has a there's a nasty edge to it that that's you know. Well, that's true. I mean, over here we had like when things were starting to get extreme, we had like you know Metallica and Exodus and shit like that. And over there they had Sodom and Destruction. So right. you know that tells you tells you something right there. But then also we had Slayer and Possessed, and you know so it's all it's all links in the chain. Whether it's Black Sabbath or Kiss or Venom or sure or Slayer or Sodom or Autopsy, it's all just fucking links in the chain, you know. So for autopsy, I, I every time you guys put a record out, I'm never disappointed. This new one is fucking a masterpiece. It's so good. Like, oh, thank you. That's it's great it's really really good. Uh, the production's great. Songwriting's great. And I wanted to just jump right into this record with you. What can you tell us about track one, uh, "Stab the Brain"? Uh, well, uh, boy, um, I don't know. I mean, it's it's. It's just one of those things, like my, you know, um, I always say, if you didn't like us before, you still won't like us, and if you liked <laughs> us before, you'll probably still like us. You know, that's. But I, I like, I like the lyrics and the the title to that one. That's kind of a nasty, you know, stab the brain. And then when you read the lyrics, it's even grosser than you think. So that's kind of fun, and that's. Um, I like the title because it's hard to think of ones that haven't been done a million times. Nowadays, sure. I'll actually go on like metal archives and and just google shit you know like oh i have this cool song or make sure it's not been done yeah i bet i bet no one's thought of this guess what 35 people have used this before oh no that happens so much so that was one that like no one has done stab and rain so i kind of like i like that but um yeah i don't know it it seemed like a good way to start off the album oh yeah super super fast it lets you know we're not fucking around or getting old or soft or tired or complacent or anything it's just you know the middle finger you know immediately shoots at you and hits you in the forehead i absolutely love it um let's see uh track two final frost that is one that um greg wrote the music to okay um yeah so um it's i don't know it's pretty doomy you know it's about it's one of those uh classic end of the world death metal lyric material songs only instead of the world scorching and burning it kind of freezes and just <laughs> and uh and dies slowly that way uh um uh, for some reason I, I i was inspired by I, I thought back to the shining and that scene where jack nicholson's all frozen in the that's snow what was in my head <laughs> and, yeah i don't know why i just thought of that for some reason then i thought of, of frost and like just all things cold and like oh that the world could just freeze over and die and uh that seemed like a good uh a lyrical avenue to take and yeah then greg wrote the music to that one um he writes some sick ass shit and uh that song is evidence it's it's it it may be my favorite track i really like that one um, uh, i'll tell him about that he'll be stoked it's fucking it's just it, it's really good i mean this whole record's great but let's see uh track three uh the voracious one that one, actually, lyrically, I, I don't. Uh, there's a couple of songs on this album that I randomly pulled from old horror memories, you know. Um, okay. And that one, if you've ever seen or read uh, or um, 
the story, the crate from Creep Show, the movie. Dude, I'm a huge Creep Show fan. I love that. Oh, love. nice. Yeah, I can't remember what um, book it was from. If it was from uh, Skeleton Crew or Night Shift, but one of the short story books. But anyways, uh, that, I don't know why I thought of that story and why it, in the year 2022 it would make good lyrical material. But for some reason, it just did, and so that's what that one's about um unabashedly and i don't know the music i wrote the music for that one it's kind of got that rocking almost in the grin of rip of winterish vibe or something it kind right. of lopes along and and uh and then it sneaks up on you and kills you um, <laughs> yeah so yeah that's kind of a synopsis on that one question for you is you got you got me thinking creep show um creep show 2 do you like that one at all second movie i like it it's not as good as the first one but it's still fun dude the raft is my the favorite it's probably the best bit. <laughs> it's, it's so still, yeah it's still fun you know he, I mean, it's, he gets to the beach he's like i beat you i beat you and it's this wave of death <laughs> oh yeah yeah no, it's 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 good fun not as good as the first one again but still you know if you're in a creep show mood you might as well go for it i think if you ever did a song about that I'm just throwing my two cents. You're a master of songwriting, but I'm going to throw my two cents in here as a fan. You could do a song about the about the raft and just call it It Hurts. Remember, she, she's, it hurts. She's got the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so elo eloquently worded. Yeah. Oh, God, I love it. Um, anyway, yeah, that's amazing. I love Creep Show, and yeah, that's, that's lots of fun. Uh, track four, uh, Born in Blood. Um... Uh, let's see I want to say um, lyrically um, you know musically I don't know how to explain these songs I could be like yeah it's got fast parts and slow parts you know what I mean so it's kind of hard to describe the music you kind of have to listen to it probably the best thing I could do is to explain <clears throat> lyrically where these things are coming from um, that one I don't <sighs> it's not like there's a cohesive storyline to that one or something it's just kind of a uh, kind of psychedelic nonsensical gore trip nice. know, lyrically it's, so you're just like what the fuck <clears throat> but I actually got I haven't told anyone this yet I got the line from uh, the last season of Dexter oh god where, where uh, Deb goes you were I can't remember I'm gonna misquote it but something like you were born in blood just like him or some something to that effect I'm, I'm blinking out on it now but by born in blood even though it's something I'm like I know people have used this before it turns out a couple have but oddly not that many nothing high profile enough to to, to sway me off from it so I just grabbed that title because it, it just it struck a visceral nerve just hey like, yours is from Dexter too I mean yeah Dex I mean I would never write a song about Dexter or some shit and everyone's like oh, that's not Dexter I wouldn't do that but um Born in Blood was a cool title. And no, it's cool rad. It's it's it, it's cool. Allowed, yeah, it allowed me to write some weird, gory stuff that doesn't necessarily make sense. But hopefully, if you read it, it'll make you uncomfortable. Hey, that's there you go. It's I love it. Uh, track five, flesh. Is it strewn? Temple strewn. Strewn. I'm like sorry. Strewn all, like strewn all over the floor. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, um, that's a Danny song musically. Um, with his own weird style of writing, like we all have our own. It's a great songs, title. That one's kind of, oh, uh, thanks. Um, uh, lyrically, it's sort of about like an ancient cult of of people that do like you know sacrifices and you know just heaps of flesh and gore all over the place and you know hidden from from modern society. Like it could be you know this year, twenty twenty two, and they're in some obscure place in the world where they still don't have technology or anything like that and do like human sacrifices and, right you know and all that fun stuff and uh and that's pretty much what that one's about it's a burner i like that one uh track oh, six cool. yeah it's great track six tapestry of scars okay um uh that's that's an eric song musically <laughs> um that one is about um some wait am i thinking about the right one yeah, um, sorry. Uh, no, you're good. I'm still, wake, still waking up a little bit. Um, that one's about someone being obsessed with with um, self scarification to the point where their their entire goal in life on this planet Earth is to just be covered in nothing but scars and scabs and sores and wounds and Ugh. 
and all that, like from head to toe, you know, from the top of the head to the the bottom, the soles of the feet, just everything's a scar, or a wound, or a scab, or something like that, you know. And that's that's how they want to roll. That's that's wild. That's that's a good track too. But I love that what it's about. It's wild. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, track seven. This sounds like a, a, a slasher classic. Knife slice, axe chop. That's pretty much what it is. That one is about. It's basically kind of like a, a little slice of, uh, of our, uh, in particular, Eric and I's teenage days forming autopsy, where we would just watch horror movies, you know, over. And Chuck and I did that too, as a matter of fact. Really? We watch like select horror movies over and over and over and over again, and like rewind like the best gore parts. Oh, did you see how that head flew across the street? Let's rewind that. You know, that kind of stuff. And so, um, that's pretty much what that song is about. Just, it doesn't say like, we were watching horror movies or, you know, it's just, it talks about all the stuff that, you know, eviscerations and decapitations and red strangulations, and, you know, it kind of says things like that. I love that, it. That's what it's about is basically being obsessed with, with, uh, being infatuated Okay, I'm uh, obsessed with being infatuated by horror films and, you know, the, like, you know, focusing in on certain gore scenes in particular and stuff like that. So it's amazing. Uh, the, the title's pretty much on the nose. Question. So give me a movie that you and Chuck watched, uh, a good slasher, and give me a good uh, movie you and Eric watched when y'all were growing up. Um, if you want to just say one, I mean, like, like Gates of Hell. Oh uh, yeah, Fulci man. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, any of the any and all the Fulci stuff, and Eric and I watched those. You know those ones too. And then you know like Hellraiser, that was another big. Oh, one. Watched such a, a good or, movie. Like, Raw, Rawhead Rex. You know we have song a song about Rawhead Rex, Pagan Savior. That's awesome. Yeah, so that, that, that's a couple right there. Oh, it's good stuff. Um, let's see, track eight, skin by skin. Oh, that one is about. That's an that that's the one that our our smash smash hit single is, uh, <laughs> is uh, yeah it's that one um, that's an Eric song he, I don't know how he comes up with these weird guitar layers and and whatnot I mean I don't those are not of this world that's shit I couldn't come up with I know that it's but, killer um, that's an Eric song musically and um, lyrically um, it's about someone luring in unsuspecting people into their house like under the guise of oh you look fucked up and you need some help here come to my house I'll help you out <laughs> basically and um, lo and behold you get in the house and everything in the house like all the walls and ceiling and floor are comprised of of uh the skins of humans stitched together nice. as wallpaper and such you know like faces and legs and you know, backs and feet and every, you know, every part you can think of, you name it, and it's there. And uh, the person that unfortunately ends up going into the house is the newest addition. <laughs> You're my new furniture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I need a, <laughs> I need something to rest my feet on. You look good. Oh, my God, that's awesome. Um, let's see. Th this is another, God, this title for this is so good. Uh, Maggots in the Mirror, track nine. Oh, okay. Um, you know, that's that one actually we we wrote when we thought we were gonna record the album two years ago. Really? But had to yeah, um we had well we had studio time booked for June of twenty twenty. Oh right though. I, I don't I don't need to tell you what happened. <laughs> Obviously it had to be cancelled along with every other band on Planet Earth's plans. We were no exception. Uh but that song was kind of the one song that that made it from that batch of songs. Um that, that live to carry over into this new album. I, I know for my my own part, I've written some other songs to to go on the album back then. I just I scrapped. I had too much time to think about it. Like, mm. I don't know if this is, you know, too much time for scrutiny, and so a lot of them just ended up in the garbage can. But that one, um, actually, for some reason, we actually we weren't even going to put that on the album. We were like, oh, that's already on the live album. We don't need to worry about that one. And then at the last minute, we decided. We're like fuck it it's like a minute and a half we we already know it it's still a cool song let's let's just throw it in there anyway so it kind of made it in at the last minute um it's a great we title 
knew. Oh, thank you so much. That's what you asked me to begin with. I'm definitely straying off course. Oh, no, you're um, fine. I love it. <laughs> I love hearing about this. Uh, one, I'm glad you put it on the record, you know, too. Oh, cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, man, that one, um, this is another one. I think there's only two songs on the album that are, are blatant influences um, from, you know, horror or whatever. But I, I had a point where I was thinking kind of like the like the voracious one about the crate like what's another just classic gore scene from you know my, my heyday of gore when i was watching things like that like all the time and then i thought of the scene in poltergeist where oh. the guy uh you know looks in the mirror and starts you know ripping off his face and all that i'm sure a lot of people have seen that but anyways that's what that comes from and it just kind of focused in on seeing worms coming out of your face and then you're ripping your face off and you know it goes into unnecessarily graphic detail <laughs> and that's pretty i mean there's no like story like what leads up to it and what happens after it's just right right to the point it's yeah it's i they're about to put that movie back in the theater and i haven't seen it at the theater since i was a kid i think i'm gonna go watch it oh that's a great movie i haven't seen it for a long time but i remember going to see it when I was like 12 or yep. something and I thought it was pretty pretty fucked up you know and I loved it oh yeah so uh I, you know I, yeah it's a cool movie I think it holds up absolutely absolutely great song too man I, I, I'm glad y'all put that on there I think it's fun uh Thanks. yeah of course uh track 10 Slaughterer of Souls um it's kind of that doesn't have a cohesive story or anything like that it's just basically another kind of um, kind of psychedelic stream of consciousness little weird trip but just basically basically saying I'm going to slaughter your soul <laughs> you know like but there, there's no cohesive story like this happens and then that happens and there's this catharsis and it's over and whatever so there's none of that stuff going on it's kind of just like right a weird, a weird, a weird trip you know just some omnipotent, omnipotent. I'm not awake yet. Sorry, power. Just saying they're going to slaughter your soul, I and mean, it's going to happen. Oh, uh, it's like I said. This record's so much fun to listen to. All, all your stuff is so much fun. To, I love listening to every song and then checking out the lyrics. It's just a lot of fun. Um, awesome. Well, now you know what the lyrics are about. So. Yeah, it's killer, <laughs> man. Uh, let's see. And then the final track, uh, track eleven. Your eyes will turn to dust. That's another one that doesn't have a story you know or anything like that it's just kind of a fucked up thing to read um i don't have the lyrics in front of me and i certainly don't remember them as soon as as soon as we recorded this album like the moment it was mixed we had like two weeks to to fly off to portugal and netherlands and play shows so we oh shit had to sh it, yeah i mean the pressure was on i mean that the, it was a very frantic album to make just because of the time constraints it was like fuck you know like are we gonna pull this off it was seriously like you know we're we're un under the gun for every every single second making that album so if there's an urgency in the listening there was an urgency in the recording um so anyways that's a very long winded way of saying i don't remember what the lyrics are to that song but um we had to shove all those thoughts out of our heads as soon as we recorded them. Sure. And um, we just got back from the UK on Monday. So now I'm starting to go, oh, yeah, we recorded a new album. <laughs> 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 um, but that one's just, it's just kind of like selected words that I think sound cool and make you feel not very good about your day, which is one of my favorite things to do. It's not necessarily right like a story you know like he went to the graveyard and this happened or you know like just sort of like sentences that are, are cool sure that are, sure they're fucked up and and words strung together that I, I would like to think other people haven't strung together before I like to do that a lot oh dude it's like I said this this record's the whole package speaking of which you guys in my opinion outdid yourself with the cover art for this record can you talk about that that yeah you know i'm uh, i'm not gonna disagree with that that's that's wes is doing um wes is a fucking maniac it's nasty i love it man yeah i mean he's done a few covers for us before and every single time he does one we're like oh that's his best one 
and again we're like that's his best one you know we we never give him much to work with you know i'll be like here's here's a couple song titles and maybe some lyrics and there you go and that's all he got and he he ignored pretty much whatever I, i think i sent him some dumb concept for a cover and he wisely ignored it and came up with his own because it's way better than my stupid idea but um oh no <laughs> yeah he, i mean it wasn't dumb it was like it was based on um what the fuck skin by skin kind of oh, okay but, so so he kind of actually took like the the faces thrown into a cloak he might have you know absorbed that part but the rest he just came up with his own thing entirely and that's what Wes does best, you know, very little guidance and he just goes for it. And it actually presented a problem for us because it was so good because we didn't have an album title. We didn't give him one. We didn't have one. And we saw that cover. And we we're just like, fuck, what do we call this? We can't just call it anything. Look at that art. That's insane. So it was like this huge dilemma for us trying to think of something that could possibly hold a candle to that art. You know, you can't just be like, face cloak <laughs> right whatever like you gotta come up with something fucking worthy and so when we arrived at morbidity triumphant that was that was a cool thing you know but it was uh his his art made it very difficult to come up with that because it's really insane and uh actually i just found out we're getting our copies mailed off next week and i can't wait to actually see it and uh you know open up the vinyl and uh get the inside a sniff and get that new vinyl smell dude i need a poster flag of that artwork it's fucking bad as fuck i love it i really do a magazine in europe i can't remember which one that's um actually including uh, a poster that inside their next issue i can't remember which one it is they're actually doing a poster of it i mean it's dude it seriously is i mean i love your all's art it's it goes along with the records it's so much fun uh, as a horror fan for me to just and death metal fan to just dive into your records but I really like that cover I think it really stands out and uh, it's 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 cool it lets everybody awesome. know you guys are Thanks. alive and well that's all West man seriously it is it is it is rad uh, it, is, it really is it's cool it's very old school too that's what I like about it too it's not like a we like that too we don't want that sort of digital look that a lot of bands use and you know we don't want to also do the no offense to any other bands, but the black and white drawing of the skeleton crawling out of the casket, yeah, you know, yeah. like everyone does. We don't want to do that either. This, what you see is, this is what we want. It's great, man. It really is. It's, 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 it's good stuff. Um, what about, uh, any other shows this year? Are y'all planning anything next year or anything on the burn you'd like to uh, talk about? We've got Chicago coming up. Oh, nice. Um, October 29th, I think it is. Nice. Yeah, for the fifth time, we're playing this club in Chicago. We just can't stay away from that place. It's just so cool. So um, we're doing that, and that's got a killer lineup, too. Um, you know, we're playing with Bones and Cardiac Arrest and Mulder. And actually, our good friend Dave Hill is going to do a, a stand-up set that night, too. A comedy. <laughs> that's so awesome. It's going to be fucking awesome, you know? Uh, that's that'll throw some people off it'll be great um so we've got that and that's it for this year then we we can um plot our next um our, our next fiendish plan uh, next year we've got stonehenge fest in netherlands in july and we're just buttoning up details on another show before that but that's it for for now we you know we're sort of making things up as we go as normal so I to to close out this interview, my co-host had mentioned this, and I I used to go to Milwaukee Metal Fest back in the day, but I never made it to Maryland. And he wanted me to ask you about a girl, uh, I guess getting oh, I know where this is going. Her her pussy eaten out during a the autopsy set. <laughs> yeah, what about it? <laughs> he just thought I don't know why he puts me on the spot with this. He's like, hey, ask him about that. It's like, okay, well, <laughs> what am I supposed to? I mean, what do you? My question is, what do you want to know about it? Oh, I know. It's like... We, we, weren't, we weren't participating. <laughs> we, were su- we were supplying the soundtrack. I tell you, man. I, plays, you, can, you can do whatever you want. That, there don't, it is. Don't, don't go punching random people in the face that don't deserve it. You right, know? But if right. you want to do some weird stuff besides that, go ahead. Yep. So, have you know, have at it. Have at it. He told me that, and I was like, well, that's kind of fun, you know. Um, oh, there's more. There's more to it. I've seen 
footage, you know. Oh, like good God. Three inches, three inches away from the subject matter, and there's more going on than most people know about. Oh, my Lord. So, yeah, it's great. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's, you know, we... We were unaware of the event until after the play, <laughs> and someone's like, "Oh, did you see this thing that happened?" And here's, of course, you know, we're in the the cell phone camera age, so here, you know, there's footage, there's pictures. That's so. so we're like, oh, cool! I'm glad we, you know, I got I'm glad we put people in the mood. Major, major evening better. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's cool. You know? Hey, man, it's hey. He told me I was. I just thought it was funny. I was just like, yeah, I'll ask him. It's like, you know, it's it's flattering for us, you know. I mean, we, I mean, not that we're not America's sexiest band. You are, but you know, it's 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 fun. I mean, I look. Hey, I, it's I never made it to that fest, but you know, I I remember going to Milwaukee. You all played at Milwaukee, didn't you? Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. Actually played in Milwaukee in '89, and then. uh played it again with the ravenous in like 2001 or something like that that's around the time I when was, i was there was, that was one of the last ones i remember king diamond was, yeah. was one of the headliners i think that might have been the last time they did it I, I i had a lot of fun going to that i remember going to it a couple times in the in the 90s and got to see you know cannibal with barnes and you know all this shit that I wanted to see, that, that I could have seen back home. But it was fun to get to see the other bands too. You know, some. Oh of the, yeah, those were great. They had a, they had a thing going for quite some time. So that was that was a lot of fun. Man, look, I hope you have a great weekend. Kids, buy Morbidity Triumphant from Autopsy. It comes out September 30th on Peaceville Records. Dude, this has been an honor. I thank you so much for taking the time to do this with me today. I appreciate it. Hey, no problem at all. It's good to talk to you, and uh, cheers to everyone who's, who's listening. Hopefully, we'll see you all somewhere sometime. So awesome, dude. I wish you all the best. And you know something? I sort of enjoyed it. Phantasm.